Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. It's been raining outside for like four days, which is not my favorite weather, but it does help me to get more of these studies cranked out. So today we're gonna to talk about Acts chapter 13, and we've got all the previous chapters and five minute studies in the book of Acts on, uh, on this YouTube channel. There's also these free handouts that you're about to see on our website, and you can download them for free. So go check those out. Thanks to the patrons and the people that support this channel that make all of this stuff free for people. So Acts 13, this is really a, a big chapter, a shift in the focus of Luke's documentation of the early church. We're, we're going to see really a shift off of the Apostle Peter and his ministry and the ministry of the other um, 11 apostles. And we're going to now place it on Paul and Barnabas to begin with. So let's jump into this. When did the events of chapter 13 take place? Well, this would have been somewhere between year 45 and 47 AD. We've got several main characters in this chapter. We've got Paul, or Saul. He was an apostle who traveled around the Mediterranean region planting churches. His partner in crime is his good friend, and I think it's fair to say his, his mentor, uh, Barnabas, who was a fellow worker with him with some of his travels around the Mediterranean. He was a Levite from the island of Cyprus, which we'll talk about in a little bit. We have John Mark. He was a young man, seemingly, from Jerusalem who traveled with Paul and Barnabas at the beginning of their trip. He traveled to Cyprus with them. On the island of Cyprus, Paul and Barnabas are going to meet a guy named Sergius Paulus. He was a Roman proconsul, and he becomes a believer by the end of the chapter. Someone tried to keep him from becoming a believer, though, and that was a guy named Bar-Jesus, or Elamis. He was a magician on Cyprus, and he opposed the gospel message. And then finally, we've just got a group of people, the Jews of Antioch in Pisidia. A lot of the latter part of this chapter is going to be focused around them and the way that they responded to Paul's preaching about Jesus being the Messiah. Where do the events of chapter 13 take place? Well, we've got quite a few because there's a lot of traveling going on here. I'm just going to really hit the major ones. I'm not going to try to list every single place that's mentioned in the chapter. So the first one is Antioch in Syria. This is Paul and Barnabas's hometown where they were working with the church. They're going to travel to the island of Cyprus, which was uh, out in the Mediterranean Sea, and it was Barnabas's hometown, according to Acts chapter 4, verse 36. And then they're going to go to Perga in Pamphylia. This was a stop on their way to the next town. Paul and Barnabas proceeded on, but John Mark turned back, and he went back to Jerusalem when they were in Perga. We have Antioch in Pisidia. Paul preached to the Jews in Antioch, and he had mixed success there. At the very end of the chapter, there's a reference to Iconium, which we'll talk about in the next chapter. This is where Paul and Barnabas went after they were run out of Antioch in Pisidia. And so now for our outline. We've got, I think, three sections again today. First section is very short, verses 1 through 3. God calls Paul and Barnabas to embark on a church planting journey. So while they were still in Antioch of Syria, the Holy Spirit called Paul and Barnabas out to a specific work. They were to set out from Antioch and to preach the gospel in other cities and make disciples. And John Mark, a man from Jerusalem, he accompanied them on the first part of this journey. The second section is Paul and Barnabas' first stop, and that was on the island of Cyprus. So verse 4 through 12 focuses on their preaching on the island. So this trio... Paul, Barnabas, John, Mark, they go to Cyprus, and upon arrival, they begin teaching the Jews in the Jewish synagogues. And after teaching throughout the island in many different locations, they met a proconsul, which was a high-ranking Roman official. His name was Sergius Paulus. And they taught Sergius Paulus about Jesus and about the gospel, but they were bothered by this magician named Bar-Jesus, uh, or Elamis. He was wanting to keep the proconsul from becoming a disciple. To prevent this, the Holy Spirit, through Paul, struck Elamis with blindness for a period of time. And after seeing this, the proconsul believed and uh, he put his faith in Jesus. In the last section, in the biggest section here, verses 13 through 52, is the, the work, the preaching that went on in Antioch of Pisidia. So there's Antioch in Syria, and there's Antioch in Pisidia. Uh, 
there were several Antiochs in the ancient world. So just make sure that you don't get those mixed up or think that they're the same place. And you can see them on the map that was up earlier. So Paul and Barnabas, they traveled to Antioch in Pisidia. But as I mentioned, John Mark returned to Jerusalem. And we're not exactly told why he returned. On the Sabbath day, Paul spoke to the Jews in the synagogue, and he recounted the history of Israel to them. He spoke to them about David and God's promise to David to bring a Savior through his descendants. He told them how John the Baptist had prepared the Jews for the arrival of this Messiah. And finally, he told them about Jesus, who fulfilled the scriptures regarding the Messiah when he died and resurrected the third day. Paul referenced several prophecies that were related to David that were fulfilled in Jesus. He was making the case that Jesus really was the one who was prophesied about. He really was the Christ, the anointed of God. Some of those prophecies regarding David are Isaiah 55 verse 3 and Psalm 16 verse 10, which was actually mentioned by Peter back in Acts chapter 2. Paul told the Jews to heed the words of the prophets and the law of Moses, and to put their faith in Jesus to have forgiveness of sins. Now, some of the Jews, they heard these words, and they gladly accepted them, and they were very interested, and they wanted to hear more, and they invited Paul and Barnabas to come back on the next Sabbath day. But there are others who rejected Paul and Barnabas's teaching, and they went around contradic contradicting the things that they taught. Paul told those Jews who were fighting against him, that if they continued to reject him, he would just go to the Gentiles. And the Gentiles were very happy to hear this. Verse 49 tells us that the word of God spread all throughout this region during the time that Paul and Barnabas were there. But the Jews ended up stirring up trouble and they ran the uh, duo of preachers out of town. And then they went to the city of Iconium, which we'll talk about in the next chapter. So as far as our application here, I, I just have a, a simple one, but it's one that I think all of us need to keep in mind as we uh, try to mimic the preaching of Jesus and also we learn from the preaching of Paul and Barnabas. And that is that the good news of Jesus has always been and will always be a divisive message. Jesus informed his disciples ahead of time that his work on earth would bring a sword of division between people who were once unified, according to Matthew chapter 10, verse 34 through 36. You notice here that Paul taught the exact same message to the Jews, but he received very mixed responses. If we're going to be disciples, then we need to accept that the message that we carry, the good news that we want to share with people, is going to be controversial. Some people love the light of truth, and other people love the darkness. John 3, verse 19. So just be prepared. Know that some people will love you for sharing the message of grace with them, and some people will hate you. And that doesn't mean that you are doing anything wrong. In fact, encountering some controversy may indicate that you are teaching the gospel faithfully. If we never encounter controversy, then maybe we're not teaching like Jesus taught.